The war left Germany in ruins. Its economy had disintegrated. Markets had broken down. Shops were empty. Already the Russians occupied East Germany and were waiting for the rest to fall into their lap. In the American and British occupation zones, raging hyperinflation had made the German currency worthless. In the winter of 1948, the Allies appointed as Director of Economic Affairs a rotund, cigar-chomping economist named Ludwig Erhardt. A staunch anti-Nazi, Erhard was a free market economist who shared many of Hayek's beliefs and ideas. He also believed the Allies' economic rules were making a bad situation worse. The occupying authorities had imposed a system under which there were extensive wage and price controls, supposedly to control inflation. But of course, wage and price controls never control inflation. And you had essentially uh, a economy that was brought to a halt. In, situation, in this situation, the black markets formed, and American cigarettes were its form of currency. Nobody smoked cigarettes. They were for small transactions. Cognac was a medium of circulation for large transactions. The Allies introduced a new currency, the Deutschmark, to replace the worthless German money. But for Erhardt, that was not enough. So without informing the Allies, Erhardt went on the radio and made a startling announcement. Ludwig Erhardt, legendary man, he decided without asking anybody and against the will of the American occupation powers he decided to give up all price controls. Next day, General Lucius Clay, the man in charge of occupied Germany, demanded to know what Erhardt thought he was doing. Clay said, what have you done? You've changed the Allied price controls. Erhard replied, Herr General, I haven't changed them, I've abolished them. <laughs> and Clay said, my advisers tell me it's a big mistake. Erhard replied, Herr General, my advisers tell me the same thing. Overnight, the black market disappeared. People stopped hoarding, and goods not seen for 10 years went on sale. It started the markets working with free prices. Instead of nothing being in the windows of the shops, everything started to come up. And that began the German economic miracle. Germany's social market economy combined free markets with a strong welfare state. Within a few years, Germany's social market economy overtook Britain's more planned economy. But back then, nobody wanted to model themselves on Germany. Most countries preferred to plan their economies. 